This is definitely amazing. Look, my name is Representative Bakari Sellers, and I'm here to welcome you all today and give a special introduction. You know, in 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King gave that I Have a Dream speech where he talked about the fierce urgency of now. Where South Carolina, our time is now. Our time is now to elect the next president of the United States. Bakari Sellers, 23 years old, a law student, the youngest legislator in the United States, a son of the Civil Rights Movement. I am so proud to have the support of Representative Bakari Sellers. He has been there from the start. He's an up-and-comer, not just here in South Carolina, but around the country people are talking about him. Bakari is the son of Cleveland Sellers, scapegoat for the 1968 Orangeburg Massacre, the shooting in which Henry Smith, Delano Middleton, and Samuel Hammond died in a hail of bullets from white South Carolina Highway Patrolmen on the campus of SC State College. This day that we remember, although occurring some 16 years before I was born, has undoubtedly become the most important day of my life. On February 8, 1968, as the night fell and darkness covered this city, after protesting one of the last vestiges of discrimination, shining a light on one of Jim Crow's final hiding places, a group of students built bonfires and sang protest songs. And within moments along the embankments on the front of the campus, police positioned themselves along Highway 601. The state police then closed in on students with shotguns loaded with deadly double lot buckshots. And for eight seconds, 1,001, 1,002, Students engulfed by fear. <laughs> White politicians in South Carolina's legislature hold the key to investigating the Orangeburg massacre. Sellers, along with 25 other legislators, nearly all African American, sponsored a bill to open an investigation of the shooting. It didn't pass. The young legislator says he'll keep trying for as long as it takes. It's a culture here in South Carolina. Yeah. And you don't change a culture um, in one day or one month or one year. Um, it's going to take some time. Um, we've got to keep putting out progressive legislation, keep showing people that, I mean, the simple yes we can. In the meantime, his father, Cleveland, keeps up the pressure as well. Before the 40th anniversary of the shooting, Cleveland discussed the state situation. Orangeburg is the litmus test for race relations in South Carolina. How is it that you're going to expect folk to be able to talk and communicate when you've been so secret and silent and covering up something that's so obvious, and that is you got three students that are killed and some 50 that are injured, and you won't talk about it? You won't, I mean, you don't say anything at all about it. You just let it go as if it's going to fade out of... They, they didn't let it go. They arrested you. Oh, okay. Well, maybe they have it fixed. <laughs> but I think it was Dr. King that quoted somebody else probably, but he said, the truth crushed to the ground shall rise again. again. That's just like the Confederate flag. As long it is, it, as it is where it is, that we, we will revisit that again. That will never go away. And Orangeburg is the same way. We're coming up on the 40th anniversary uh, uh, next year. And the, the, the story is already out of the box. Uh, the position that South Carolina has taken is simply that uh, it's out of our mind, out of our sight, and 
we don't, we don't have anything else to say about it. But there were a lot of victims there, not just the ones who were wounded, but people in South Carolina who believed in justice and know that that's an injustice that took place there. People who believed in a democracy and figured that something happened that shouldn't have happened. Uh, the relatives of many of the people who were injured, even the classmates. You know, I run into to students who were there at that particular time, can, cannot go back to South Carolina State, can't go back to visit. You know, that's, that's a problem. And you have to, the state has a responsibility because it has complicity in this thing. The responsibility is contrition, making whole those who were victims, turning it around and, and taking away that victimization and, and making the victims the cause of their injuries.